Ruud van Nistelrooy reveals if Ruben Amarim had influence on Manchester United tactics versus Chelsea. Ruud van Nistelrooy will oversee three more matches before handing over to new Man United head coach Ruben Amarim. Interim manager Ruud van Nistelrooy has confirmed new head coach Ruben Amarim had no say in Manchester United's plans for the visit of Chelsea on Sunday afternoon. Amarim was installed as Eric Ten Hag's permanent successor on Friday and will officially take charge at Old Trafford on November 11th. His first game at the helm will be against Ipswich Town on November 24th. Van Nistelrooy will, in addition to this afternoon's clash with Chelsea, oversee Thursday night's Europa League clash with Payok and next Sunday's Premier League tussle with Leicester City, who were beaten 5-2 by the Reds in the Carabao Cup in midweek. Asked if Amarim had any input in plans for the visit of Chelsea, Van Nistelrooy told Sky Sports ahead of kickoff. No. There's no contact about this. It's very clear, and it's communicated with the players that I'll be in charge until Sunday next week, the Leicester game. After that, the new manager will take over. That's why it's clear for the players and staff. We can just focus on one thing, and that's winning these three games. Speaking in a separate interview ahead of kickoff, Van Nistelrooy also outlined the impact Rasmus Hodgloon could have this afternoon. The Dane has been drafted back into the starting 11, replacing Joshua Xerxy in attack. He will have a very important part to play Rasmus today, Van Nistelrooy told MUTV. I think Chelsea is a team that likes to press the opponent very high up the pitch and jump into man v as man situations, so we have to be clever with that, how we play out, how we find the free man, and how we can use the space in behind of the fullbacks and the centerbacks. Rasmus is good at that. He will time his runs and use the space that they leave at the back. We will see how it works. In the lead-up to Manchester United's crucial clash against Chelsea, the anticipation around the club intensified as Ruud van Nistelrooy spoke candidly about the tactical adjustments he had implemented. With just three matches remaining in his interim role, all eyes were on how the legendary striker would adapt his strategy before handing over the reins to Ruben Amarim, the highly regarded head coach known for his innovative approach. As Van Nistelrooy prepared for the game, he acknowledged the influence Amarim had already begun to exert on the team's philosophy. Ruben has a clear vision for the club, he said in a pre-match interview. His ideas have been seeping into our training sessions, and I can feel the players responding to it. We've integrated some of his tactical principles to maximize our chances against Chelsea. Under Van Nistelrooy's stewardship, the team had adopted a more aggressive pressing style, which aimed to win back possession quickly. However, with Amarim's emphasis on fluidity and ball retention, fans could expect a more nuanced performance. Van Nistelrooy hinted at potential shifts in player roles, saying, You might see some players stepping into positions that are more aligned with Ruben's system. It's about blending our strengths with his philosophy. As match day arrived, the atmosphere at Old Trafford was electric. Fans buzzed with excitement, eager to see how the team would execute Van Nistelrooy's vision while hinting at the new era to come. With the tactical landscape shifting, the match against Chelsea would not just be about three points. It would be a statement of intent, a prelude to the future. As the game kicked off, the players displayed a newfound confidence. United pressed high, forcing Chelsea into errors. The midfield showed signs of cohesion, with players exchanging quick passes and creating space, hallmarks of Amarim's tactics. A stunning goal from Bruno Fernandes in the 30th minute sent the crowd into a frenzy, showcasing the fluidity that the new coach was likely to demand. Despite the challenges Chelsea posed, Van Nistelrooy's interim tenure culminated in a spirited performance. After the final whistle, he reflected on the game with pride, knowing that he had set the stage for Amarim's arrival. This is just the beginning, he stated. Ruben will take this club forward, and I'm excited to see where he can lead us. As Van Nistelrooy stepped away from the sidelines, the club's supporters felt a renewed sense of optimism. Ruben Amarim's influence was already being felt, signaling a promising future for Manchester United. United, 
who appointed Ruben Amarim as their new head coach on Friday, will be hoping to build on their 5-2 victory over Leicester City in the Carabao Cup in midweek. Goals from Casemiro, 2, Bruno Fernandes, 2, and Alejandro Garnacho sealed a convincing start to Ruud van Nistelrooy's spell in caretaker charge. He will remain in charge until Amarim officially takes over on November 11th. Having blown Leicester away in the cup on Wednesday night, United now need to try and kickstart their league campaign after winning just three of their opening nine matches this term. Van Nistelrooy injected a sense of confidence into the team against the Foxes, instructing them to get on the front foot and attack, meaning he will be hoping to see more of the same this afternoon. Chelsea will arrive in M16, looking to get back on track after exiting the Carabao Cup at the hands of Newcastle United in midweek. Whoever employs Ruud van Nistelrooy as their next manager will be making a smart move. He may only be at United for one more week, but, as was evident during the Leicester victory, he is savoring the experience, and he has possibly gone even higher up in the lofty estimation of United supporters. He has conducted himself impeccably this week, but this is the biggest test. Away we go at Old Trafford. United are attacking the scoreboard end in this first half. The rendition of Take Me Home was louder and aired with greater gusto than before. That's down to the change of manager and the choice of interim. Ruud van Nistelrooy will have approved of that hold-up play by Hodgelund, not always the most dependable with his back to goal. Good start from Hodgelund, who used his body well there to win an early free kick. Hodgelund often struggles to make the ball stick, and it's an area of his game that can be improved. Chelsea cleared the subsequent free kick with minimal fuss, and Fernandez thwarted their counter-attack. We're only into the first few minutes of the game, but it's been a fluid attacking line so far. Rashford was playing as the number 10 just there, and Fernandez was on the left. Having a fluid attack keeps the opponent guessing, and there seems to be room in behind Chelsea's defensive line to exploit. Casemiro was at fault for that Chelsea chance. His ball into midfield was far too casual and Palmer was sent into the box, only to be denied by a block from De Ligt. The Dutch defender was stumbling and it looked like Palmer was going to get the better of him, but he recovered nicely. Chelsea have had some joy bypassing the United midfield a couple of times already. United are going to have to plug that gap at some point. Hoyland has started very authoritatively against some physical center halves on Colwill and Fofana. Van Nistelrooy just instructed Dallo to keep tabs on Palmer when Chelsea had a throw-in in their own third. If ever a player can change a game in the blink of an eye, it's Palmer, as he did against United in April. Caicedo has done a number on United a few times with Brighton, and that touch for Lavia just then was exquisite. Chelsea moved from their own third into United's swiftly and it came from Caicedo's flick, and it almost led to a Chelsea goal. United have looked so vulnerable to aerial balls this season, and De Ligt does not appear capable of taking ownership, despite his physique. Van Nistelrooy just applauded Mazraoui for his recovery run there, and he won't be thanking fellow fullback De Lot for dithering on the ball up the other end. Chelsea have been the more assertive side, which is not a surprise when they've had their head coach in the building for months, and Van Nistelrooy has been in charge for days. United are attempting a pressing quartet at times without ever looking like nicking the ball. Chelsea just keep it patiently, pick the gap, and they are invariably on their way. There is a reason why Casemiro looked very good against Leicester's reserves. United look very open when Chelsea transition and Ugarte and Casemiro need to maintain a tighter connection. Fernandez might also have to drop back further than he wants to, because there is too much space in the center of the pitch. But how often have we said that when discussing United? We're approaching 20 minutes and Chelsea have marginally been the better team. It was three against three just there, and Garnacho had to do better with his shot. It was weak and straight at Sanchez. His finishing was poor in the defeat to West Ham, and although he was on the score sheet in midweek, it's something he must work on. Although it's been an open game so far, the quality in the final third from both sides has been lacking. 
Referee Robert Jones is looking out of his depth. He should have got his card out a couple of times in the last few minutes, but let Chelsea off the hook. Then when he did, it wasn't a booking. It has not been a high-quality game. Chelsea's approach play has been slick at times, but they have hardly had an attempt at goal. As Manchester United fans gather in pubs and around screens, there's a palpable buzz in the air. The talk of the town is Ruben Amarim, the innovative manager of Sporting Lisbon, and the possibility of him taking over the reins at Old Trafford. Many supporters are excited about what this could mean for the team. Amarim is known for his dynamic 3-4-3 formation, which emphasizes high intensity, a strong possession game, and a relentless attacking style. In this system, three central defenders would anchor the back line, allowing for two wide players who can operate both as wingers and defenders. This change could provide the flexibility United has been missing. Alejandro Garnacho, with his youthful energy and speed, is seen as a perfect fit for the wide role. His ability to take on defenders and deliver quality crosses could become a cornerstone of United's attack. With Garnacho pushing forward, fans envision a more fluid attacking style. This approach would allow forwards like Marcus Rashford and Rasmus Hojlund to thrive, exploiting the spaces created by Garnacho's runs. United's play could shift from a stagnant, predictable style to one that keeps opponents on their toes. Amarim's teams are known for their relentless pursuit of possession. They don't just pass for the sake of passing. They move the ball quickly to create overloads, outnumbering opponents in key areas of the pitch. This could be a game-changer for United. Players like Bruno Fernandes, with his vision and creativity, would play a pivotal role in orchestrating the attack. Casemiro's experience would be crucial in controlling the tempo and providing a defensive foundation. The role of the goalkeeper also becomes critical in a Morim system. A sweeper-keeper like Andre Onana would not only need to make crucial saves, but also be involved in building attacks from the back. His ability to distribute the ball quickly and accurately would enhance United's attacking transitions, catching opponents off guard and keeping the tempo high. Another exciting element of Amorim's philosophy is the use of overlapping wingers. Rather than remaining static, these players would be encouraged to make forward runs, creating space for teammates and opening new avenues for attack. This fluidity would add a layer of unpredictability to United's game. Fans can imagine Garnacho overlapping with a midfielder, pulling defenders out of position, and creating opportunities for intricate passing sequences that slice through opposing defenses. As the possibility of this tactical revolution looms, Manchester United supporters are filled with a mix of hope and excitement. Amorim's potential appointment represents not just a change in formation, but a chance to restore the club's identity as a fierce attacking force. The prospect of high-tempo, possession-based football filled with creativity and flair has fans dreaming of a team that plays with the passion and determination reminiscent of United's storied history. If Amorim takes charge, it could mean the return of exciting football to Old Trafford. The combination of talented young players and seasoned professionals could lead to a vibrant attacking style that captivates fans and intimidates opponents. The idea of a revitalized squad fighting for every ball and pressing with purpose could rekindle the flame of glory that once burned so brightly at the club. As the sun sets over Manchester, supporters eagerly await news of Amarim's appointment. The chant of, here we go again, could soon take on new meaning, signaling the start of an exciting new chapter. With the potential for tactical innovation and renewed hope, fans are optimistic about the future. The air is thick with anticipation, and the question on everyone's mind is whether this change will lead to a resurgence in Manchester United's fortunes. In this moment, as the club stands at a crossroads, the prospect of Ruben Amarim's vision becoming a reality fills fans with excitement. Will he be the one to guide United back to the pinnacle of football, or will the challenges prove too great? Only time will tell, but for now, the potential for a fresh start has supporters buzzing with optimism, ready to embrace whatever comes next. 
As the sun sets over Manchester, supporters eagerly await news of Amorim's appointment. The chant of, here we go again, could soon take on new meaning, signaling the start of an exciting new chapter. With the potential for tactical innovation and renewed hope, fans are optimistic about the future. This optimism is palpable, as conversations swirl about how Amorim's dynamic style could transform the team. The thought of a high-intensity game, characterized by quick transitions and creative play, fills supporters with excitement. They imagine a squad that can not only compete for titles, but also entertain, reminiscent of the glory days when United dominated the Premier League. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting a warm glow over Manchester, the air buzzed with anticipation. The announcement had sent ripples through the football community. Ruben Amorim was set to become the new head coach of Manchester United. His decision was not made lightly. It was a crossroads in his career that could define his legacy. Amorim stood outside the bustling stadium, taking in the vibrant energy of the fans. His heart raced at the thought of leading one of the most storied clubs in football history. He had spent the last few years in Lisbon, nurturing a team with a vision similar to his own. But the lure of Manchester was undeniable. When the club triggered his buyout clause, it felt like destiny. His thoughts drifted back to the conversations he had with his coaching team, his trusted confidants who had shared the highs and lows of their journey. They had all agreed it was time for a new challenge. It's now or never, he had told them, his voice steady with determination. They understood the weight of this moment, not just for him, but for the club and its passionate supporters. Amorim's coaching philosophy emphasized a fluid style of play, a refreshing blend of tactical discipline and creativity. He knew that to revive Manchester United's fortunes, he would need to instill confidence in a squad that had been struggling for form. The challenge ahead was daunting, but he relished it. He could envision the players' faces, eager for guidance, ready to embrace a new approach. As he stepped into the club's headquarters, he was greeted by a mixture of excitement and skepticism. The weight of expectation loomed large. The fans wanted results, and they wanted them fast. But Amarim was undeterred. He had always thrived under pressure. He was there to rebuild, to restore the club's glory, and he felt invigorated by the task ahead. Welcome to Old Trafford, coach, a familiar voice called out. It was the club's director of football who had been instrumental in bringing him to Manchester. We believe you're the right man for the job. The supporters are eager to see what you can do. I won't let them down, Amarim replied, a steely resolve in his eyes. We'll play the kind of football that makes them proud to wear that jersey. Over the next few days, as he settled into his new role, he began to study the squad meticulously. Each player had a story, a potential waiting to be unlocked. He held individual meetings, listening to their aspirations and frustrations, forging a connection that he hoped would translate into unity on the pitch. On November 11th, the day of his first match, excitement crackled in the air. Fans filled the stands, their chants echoing through the historic stadium. Amorim stood in the tunnel, taking a deep breath, ready to step into the spotlight. As he walked onto the field, the roar of the crowd enveloped him, fueling his determination. This is just the beginning, he thought, a smile creeping onto his face. With each match, he would sculpt the team in his image, igniting a spark that he believed could reignite the club's storied legacy. The road ahead would be challenging, but he was ready for the journey. Manchester United was more than a club. It was a passion, a way of life, and he was here to make it thrive again.